morning. Uh, we are here in New York City for NFT NYC. Uh, my name is David Cash. We're here with NFTS.WTF. And we are here this morning with Nicole Ruggiero. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope I'm not butchering the way you pronounce your name, but hopefully no, this works. No, <laughs> good. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> so you're from New York. This is your hometown. But uh, now 10,000 people have joined us here, uh, NFT people, no less. So yeah. how does this feel for you being in the space for so long and now seeing so many people IRL getting so excited about NFTs? It's really cool. Like, I'm, like, super glad it's, like, where I live also because it's been, like, super chill to kind of just like leave my apartment and like mosey on over to like Times Square and like be able to hang out with everyone. It's right. it's kind of surreal, like, like, you know, meeting people who like are other artists or like NFT people or blockchain people or like even people uh, like who own the programs that I'm using. It's pretty crazy, like everyone in one space. It, it just feels so surreal, yeah. It's beautiful. And I know you've had your art featured in Times Square a couple times now, um, but how does it feel to have your face in Times Square? Because I know, like, for me, it was insane because, you know, being behind the camera people, behind the scenes people, we never really think that this is going to be, like, us in context like that. How was that for you? Was it a weird experience? <laughs> it was also really surreal. I feel like everything's just really weird right now, you know, like, in, like, the best way possible. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's day three, day four at this point. Yeah. Um, we've gone to a bunch of different things. Um, has there been anybody that you've met or an event that you've gone to that's really like stuck out for you or that's been like super surreal or cool? Jeez. <laughs> like having to like pick apart like all the events now. Um, being on stage after like Tarantino was like pretty Sorry. crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, that was so super cool and also really scary, but awesome. That was that must have been such a. I was super surprised. How did you feel when you just like saw him in an NFT context? Like, what was that like for you? I was like, what? Like, is this? I start texting everyone, like my family and my friends. I was like, Tarantino's on stage. Like, what? What is happening right now? You know, like it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know. Everything's surreal. Like, yeah. I, that's all I can say. Um, somebody mentioned it in an interview, and I love it. They said, like, the metaverse doesn't exist, but this is the metaverse, because we're all here yeah. at once, like, at one place. Like, all the people who kind of make this happen. Yeah. So it's really crazy. It's really crazy. Wait, who said the metaverse doesn't exist, though? <laughs> well, the metaverse in its initial uh, in its initial definition doesn't exist. Yeah. We're, we're working towards it. We're working towards I think, it eventually. I think we're very much in it already. Yeah. yeah. Tell us what you think. Tell Give us, because, you know, there's always the omniverse, metaverse, what What's what? What's yeah. your perception? Because obviously you work in it quite a bit. I mean, okay, so what, wait, no, tell me your definition. Yeah, so no, like metaverse is in like one um, system where everything works together, like the central end and sandbox, because like if you could uh, interoperably go between the two, like for me that would be the metaverse. But yeah. I'd say like each solution is in itself like a bit of a metaverse. Yeah. Uh, but how do you feel about it? That's actually interesting. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'm not really defining it in the context of like NFTs or blockchain or anything. It's more of just kind of this like, uh, like digital existence and perception. And I think that we're definitely very much in that already. And we have been for, for years now. Yeah. yeah. Well, you also come from like VR and 3D. So, I mean, like coming from a VR space where it's, I feel like you have interacted with a lot of these people probably almost IRL because it's like, you yeah. know, you have your avatars, you're there in person. Yeah. Um, how has that been for you moving from that to to in person? Like, I guess also post COVID, it's so strange because it's also immediate yeah. it's been the past couple months. Um. It's really natural for me, I feel like. I'm like someone who's always kind of existed in that space. Uh, so yeah, I think it's really important to have uh, both like in-person, like IRL uh, meetups and uh, online meetups. And I've like very much like have felt that way for a long time. Yeah, I know yeah. you've existed in the space for quite a while. Do you do you uh, think that we have a future of blending the two? Like, do you want to see more instances of like people in VR VR being able to experience things like this, like uh, simultaneously? Simultaneously, like walking around Times Square with a VR <laughs> with a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe when the glasses come out. I mean, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna move more towards like augmented reality. Um, okay. Yeah, versus uh, VR, like where you can't see uh, anything, but. 
yeah, I that's definitely coming. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Um, so we'll take it a couple steps back because yeah. you know um, you've been in the space quite a while and you've been in the space as a queer person for quite a while. Yeah. And obviously that's something that's really important for me. Yeah. Um, representation in the space. You know, when I started doing NFTs, I didn't see any queer representation for the most part. Yeah. But um, I think you're really you're you're quite public and open with your partner and you create together. Yeah. Um, how's the process been for you um, coming into um, like very much like I don't know a finance bro space and kind of like burgeoning yourself into into this context and doing so well about it how, how has that been for you uh for me it's like you just have to be yourself and i think that's most important and as long as you embrace that i think other people embrace you as well unless they're like unless they suck people, <laughs> you know <laughs> trying not to say any bad words on, on camera um yeah unless they're you know Whatever. The not positive term the of degen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think uh, generally speaking, it's, I think a, like maybe a lot of these people or some of these people haven't like encountered that many queer people. So I think there's some like education going on for Absolutely. sure. But that's okay. I mean, you know, as long as they're respectful and receptive, then. Right. And I mean, like, I think the best thing you can possibly in this space is authentic and people really appreciate that. So, yeah. I mean, definitely. Yeah. 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 And then uh, just following up on that, you've been creating with your partner for a while now. How has that process been for you? For anybody who doesn't know, uh, Nicole creates together with her lovely partner. Do you want to do you want to talk about your partner or like that creative process yeah. that you guys have together? So uh, my partner's art name is Plant Daddy. And um, we actually met through NFTs on like yeah. a shill thread that I created. <laughs> Um, That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> on Twitter? <laughs> on Twitter. Beautiful. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we flew back and forth after COVID. We couldn't meet for a couple months, um, but we flew back and forth uh, and uh, started making art together. We made a full piece, actually, uh, before we even met, which was crazy. So it's so weird. It was so weird, like, but really cool to be able to, like, to meet in a way. like Meeting in, in the metaverse, dating in the metaverse. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, by making work together like that. It was really cool. It's been it's been awesome and she's just an amazing sculptor and our skill sets really complement each other. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to moving forward with that and we're starting our own studio and just really excited. Yeah. So, obviously the both of you work in in the 3D context and have for quite a while now, you especially. Um, I wrote an article about how, you know, the metaverse is facilitating um, larger scale sculptures than we've ever been able to actually experience. And you've done some crazy things like floating heads in the sky and things that like yeah. would be physically impossible. Yeah. Um, how has that process been for you? You know, um, being able to create whatever you'd like um, in the metaverse. I know you've been in it for a while, so it's probably pretty native for you, but um, maybe give some, give the people a little context on that. <laughs> I'm trying to compare it with like not being able to do that in my head right now. <laughs> but you're like, uh, that's my thing. <laughs> What has that been like? I think, yeah, so I'm like trying to like rewind to when I first started doing 3D. It's awesome, like I think that was, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to get into 3D because you could, can create these like uh, realistic, uh, surreal uh, pieces of art that's like very much my style. And I think I felt very stuck before this because uh, when I first started art, like when I was a kid, you know, I was like drawing and I was into realism and um, I had a hard time kind of like bridging that gap, getting into animation. I was using After Effects, which is like really cartoony. And uh, <laughs> the early days of After Effects sucked too. Like, yeah, yeah, I actually started with like Flash, like oh it, like when I was like in middle school, and it was it was bad. <laughs> but uh, you know, I I did that, and then um, yeah, like everything was like really cartoony, and that's not like it didn't like translate very well. So I think when I first started getting into 3D, I finally felt like okay, this is home. This is uh, I can express myself properly now. And so, uh, yeah, it just feels really good. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, like, unfortunately in the art world right now, like, unless you're, unless you're Jeff Koons, you can't do some of these large scale right. sculpture pieces. Yeah. So um, maybe can you share with people, like, what's the largest scale or most uh, intense piece that you've done that you would not be able to do without, uh, without 3D or without the metaverse? <laughs> Uh, larger scale stuff. So I've done like augmented reality and virtual reality exhibitions. Uh, I actually have been showing uh, this project called How the Internet Changed My Life, which is like six, six portraits. And it's um, also like VR, AR, and a website. Uh, and it like talks about uh, these six individuals and how the internet has really been integral to their identities. And um, so 
yeah, I mean, that, that project, uh, was it, probably one of the biggest ones I've worked on uh, with my collaborators. Uh, yeah, the GLAD scientists and Dylan Banks, really awesome people, as well as uh, a few other people who have been really wonderful throughout the, pro the process as well. Um, but uh, yeah, just making like larger scale, like pieces with VR air, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's just so cool and fulfilling, especially, you know, when the person coming to your show puts on the headset uh, and might be using VR for the first time right. and just like really immerses themselves in it. You see their face without their eyes, but they're so excited. They're, <laughs> yeah, and they just love it. And like giving people that experience is just so cool and fulfilling. Um, we used like hand tracking also. And uh, there was one woman, uh, because I just went to like Basel, Switzerland to nice. show this, and there's Basel, this Basel. one, <laughs> there's this one woman, and she uh, did the whole experience, and then afterwards, um, she took off the headset, and you know she was like, "That was so cool," and um, she was like, "That was the first time I've ever done VR." And I was like, what? Because like she just seemed so natural. And it was so cool because like I've done experiences with controllers before, but this one you just use your hands, which is like a new a, a newer technology. No haptics, just your hands. Cool. It's wow. hand tracking. So cool. Um, and it was so cool to see like that bridging of the gap um, where you're not using controllers, where you are just using your but hands. It's so native and people it's just exactly. Yeah. It's like people can more naturally do those experiences and that was something for me as an artist that was so cool to see. It's amazing. Yeah. And I think you touched on something really important beyond just like the, the art itself. It's part of the user experience. And I think that like with your recent project and some of your work, you really designed that and you go through extra lengths in, in creating a, like, a, like a UI UX, sorry to use a marketing term, but you know, yeah. um, for, for the user. And like when you're curating these six art, like, you know, these six stories into a context and you're creating your microset and you're creating your, you know, the whole yeah. experience, like, yeah. it's really 360. And like we haven't been able to yeah. do that before. Yeah. Um, so how has that been for you? Because I, I, I say that, you know, every NFT artist now is basically a 360 media company because you have to do so much in the way of producing, et cetera. Um, have you built out a team? What has been your process like in, in uh, creating context around your work? Because you've done such a good job. Jeez, <laughs> uh, that's a hard question to answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it just kind of goes back to what I was saying, like working with my collaborators and um, like building out like a whole experience is, is really important and bridging the gap is really important between like, uh, like the physical and the digital, that's always been a really integral part of my practice. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm curious just because, I mean, it's been around for a while, but so have, so have you now in this space. It's funny to say because, you know, it's so new. Um, but AR is also a very important part. And you're talking about the, brand, the blending of physical digital. Yeah. Um, what's maybe something that uh, you'd like people to check out in terms of AR or that you think is really revolutionary right now um, that either you've done or you've seen it done uh, recently? I don't know. I, I, I think with AR, it's still kind of getting to the point where it's uh, becoming more and more integrated. Uh, so I don't know if anything at the moment is like super natural. It, right. Like it is kind of like you still feel like you're like looking through a screen. Especially coming from the VR world. I mean, it's, it's probably hard to, yeah. to compare, right? But I do think that VR, uh, I don't know. What I think is I think that we're going to get to a point where you can switch between AR and VR. You're going to be wearing glasses most likely. And um, it's going to be like your whole field of vision. Um, glasses, the headset, the glasses. Yeah, so, yeah, and like you can just kind of like switch it on and off. Um, and yeah, I don't. We're not there yet, right. obviously. Right. But um, when we do get there, I think. I mean, that's where we're heading. Yeah, Absolutely. in my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then going back to VR, because obviously that's a big that's a big point as well. Just a fun question. I'm curious. What's yeah. the longest amount of time you've ever spent in a headset? <laughs> um, <laughs> Roughly. Jeez. <laughs> a whole day? Yeah. Like, I mean, I like make VR stuff. So like yeah, you create in headset, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like in and out of there, you know, definitely spent whole days doing that before. Like, does it take you out of your like real life context when you're there for like hours and hours on end? Like, oh are my you God. like, oh my Be God, where am I? Being, <laughs> like in my studio just feels like that. Like yeah. I like there are times where I'm just working so much and I like leave my apartment and I'm just like, people <laughs> like or I'm like seeing like weird patterns like around like that I only see like like with polygons or something right. uh oh my goodness so like the realities are blending <laughs> for me definitely <laughs> yeah <laughs>
Um, and then talking about that just a little bit more, we'll wrap it up in a moment. But you know, you're talking about this blending of realities and mixed reality. Um, what's exciting you in terms of maybe your work right now in terms of trying to bridge that gap and have IRL, AR, VR, all of these lovely R words that we like to use in this context? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, some of the coolest stuff to me is just uh, the culture that surrounds these experiences, how people form cultural groups uh, around different topics and interests, um, you know, you know, with NFTs, of course, and the different collectibles, I think everyone's really aware of that. And then you have, uh, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube and I see people form groups over like, you know, like fingerboarding or like, <laughs> like Pokemon cards or retro gaming or, you know, stuff like that. Like, and there's all these like micro cultures that are forming that uh, weren't able to form before right. because uh, these people might be like kind of like dispersed and not that many, but now that the internet exists, uh, they're able to kind of group up and form these really cool cultures. Um, so that's something that I think is just so cool and something that I really like to focus on um, as well as uh, just forming emotional bonds uh, online as well and how people do that. So. And I mean, you're the perfect example of that. I mean, you found love in the metaverse. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's yeah. beautiful. It's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like, to, I like to, con uh, to contextualize it, and a bunch of people say this, Matt Medved and people talk about this. Yeah. Um, but going from Web 2 to Web 3, yeah. um, the biggest step has been like going from building an audience that you like almost like speak to to building a community, like people you interact with, people you talk to. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that you've had many conversations with your collectors and people in your community. Yeah. Um, how has that experience been for you, really connecting one on one with people who support you and buy your work? Honestly, I feel like I was kind of already doing that. Like I am not really much of a person that um, I just like to be very genuine and like I already like to be one on one with people. So. Uh, I feel like I already kind of like had my community and so like just growing that it's I mean it's been it's been great I really like to just like make friends and like be chill with people I don't right. really like being put on like a pedestal or anything like that like it's kind of weird to me so um yeah it's been lovely amazing and it's like it's a really natural shift I feel like what's happening right now you know the the Kim Kardashians of like the social media space it's like that phase is like very slowly ending now and like even Facebook has tried to really like jump in <laughs> yeah well I don't want to take up all of your day um, but is there anything you'd like for people to check out um, that you're working on right now maybe something that's launched uh, during NFT NYC perhaps um I mean I do have some pieces up for sale you can check me out or just follow me on Twitter underscore Nicole Ruggiero uh, Instagram just my name Nicole Ruggiero uh, and you can like find my NFTs through that. Uh, and I'll be coming out with some stuff, some really cool stuff like early next year as well. Excellent. 2022, look out. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for making the time to do this. Yeah. It's really a pleasure. It's nice to finally like chat IRL. I know we've talked briefly online before, yeah. um, but you know, that's what this is all about. Um, so this has been lovely. We're here in New York at NFT NYC. My name is David Cash and checking out. Thank you all so much for taking the time. <laughs>